Hey guys, welcome to the Touchdown Table. I'm Ryan, that's Tyler, that's Jordan. And in this video, we are going to be doing a deep dive into the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've got Big Ben coming back. Are they going to be a playoff contender again, or are they doomed for a demise? We're going to break them down for you. Let's get it started. All right, let's break down this steel curtain, by the way. We don't really talk about the Steelers too much no. on this channel, so we decided uh, let's give them a bit of love. We mm -hmm. did talk about them in our AFC North uh, prediction video, so go check that out if you haven't seen it already. Always got to shout out some past videos, but without further ado, let's get into the Steelers, and let's start with the draft, because why not just start with the draft? Uh, why not? Yeah, why not, exactly. Uh, so, I'm just going to read off the players that are drafted. Uh, they didn't have a pick in the first round because of Minka Fitzpatrick, who they got last year, which I think was worth a trade. But with their first pick, it was pick 49. They selected wide receiver Chase Claypool out of Notre Dame. Uh, I think he's going to be really good. I think he's going to have a hot season. Oh. <laughs> uh, I just really like him. He's a very big receiver. He's got great hands. And I think he was really underestimated coming out of college, and I think he's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. um, and next one, uh, Alex High Highsmith. Uh, a linebacker out of Charlotte. That was in the third round. Then Anthony McFarland, running back. Then uh, guard Kevin Dotson. Antoine Brooks Jr. out of Maryland. He's a safety. And Carlos Davis, a defensive tackle out of Nebraska for the last pick in the seventh round. I picked 3 2 32. So that is the Steelers draft. Mm -hmm. um, not, re not really many notable names mm -hmm. in that draft class. I think Chase Claypool was yeah. the first one. He's really the only huge well, notable there's name. There's a couple that stand out to me. A couple as solid picks. To yeah. where they yeah, got them. Picks. Number one, starting with Chase Claypool, a guy that people didn't really think too much of, but you watch the Notre Dame film, and it's all there from Chase Claypool. He led that team very nicely and really put them in their position that they were on the rankings this year. Yeah. Um, so... He's a guy, physical guy, some someone that the Steelers know, are going like, to love to have. Like Ten in the rankings or something? I, don't, I actually don't know. They're actually. Yeah. But um, yeah. and then their second pick as well stands out to me a lot. Alex Highsmith from UNC Charlotte, uh, a guy I loved as I watched film of him. I didn't expect to see very much, and I did really enjoy watching it. And I was really glad when they picked him mm -hmm. at around here because people were saying he was going to get drafted lower. I like where he went. I thought he could have gone even higher. And then I'll point out their last two picks, Anton Brooks Jr. and Carlos Davis, were also good at that time. No yeah. offense to Kevin Dotson and Anthony McFarland. Yeah. Those are just the ones that stand out to me more than the others. Yeah, and I'm going to add on with uh, Claypool a little bit because I really do yeah. like that pick. I think uh, Claypool's a guy who's really kind of overlooked. Um, I think that he was a second-round player, but I think where they got him, I think it was definitely a solid pick. I think he's a downfield threat, and I think that he's a guy that um, – he can make a variety of types of catches. You know, he's not a one-route guy. They used him in a lot of different ways. You know, I was watching Notre Dame film, too, and I liked what I saw in that Notre Dame mm -hmm. film. He finished at 13 right after Minnesota. 13? Oh. oh, okay. But, but Minnesota's ahead, right? Yeah, 12. Okay. Oh, four, yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes Which sense. Which one? <laughs> uh, the one, like, the University of Minnesota, oh, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. There's only, there is only one Minnesota. There's other colleges in Minnesota. Well, yes. Oh, like, yeah. there's that one that, um... I don't even know. Uh, St. John's. St. John's, yes. uh, Yeah. Who went there? Was it, was uh, it Ben Barch went there? Ben Barch, yeah. I think so. The smoothie guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's start talking about the roster. I think we've uh, hit on the draft as much as we wanted to. Jordan right. Jordan pointed out at the beginning of the video with Ben Roethlisberger coming back, and that, that did, should actually. be something. I'm sorry. Ryan did that. Um, and that's something we should definitely hit on because yeah. Ben Roethlisberger has officially shaped his beard, I believe. He's ready to go and ready to play. Yeah. Uh, and they do have depth at that position as well. We saw Mason Rudolph uh, have his chance. Devlin Hodges, Duck Hodges came in as well. Yeah. They have Paxton Lintz and JT Barrett also there in their quarterback room. But let's talk about Ben Rosberger because that's most likely going to be the starter. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see what you guys think about that. I'm excited to see how he can do this year. Yeah, it is going to be exciting to see how he can do this year because with Ben Roethlisberger, it's really one big question mark because the thing with him is the injuries. He's had many injuries in his long career. He's had some great moments in his career as well. Um, but it's gonna be, it's kind of a different team now, I guess you could say. It's not too, too different, but he really never played without Antonio Brown. I mean, he started last year, but A.B. Was, was gone, and he didn't play many games. So it's going to be interesting to see that situation with Juju Smith-Schuster, the guy who's still there, but also some new people around him. Uh, Bell is gone. He has played without Bell uh, before, so it's nothing too new for him. But it's just really going to be interesting to see how he recovers 
Um, can he be the comeback player of the year? Who knows? I still like Big Ben. I think he's going to have a good season with the Steelers. I don't think it's going to be overwhelming, but I think he'll still be that solid player we saw right before that injury last year. I think he'll he'll be all right. He's not going to be anything spectacular. It's not going to be like, oh my gosh, look at this guy out there right now. He's insane. No, he's, well, he's not a highlight maker, but he's yeah. someone that can get the job he'll done the, consistently. Yeah. He's a guy who will get the job done consistently this year, in my opinion. And I think uh, he'll give the Steelers a shot at playoffs, especially with this new format. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just kind of going around, uh, looking at the rest of the offense, look at the running back position. They got James Conner, who he has showed some promise, but I think he has maybe declined a little bit, but he's still a very young player, certainly has potential. And then you look at the wide receivers. Juju Smith-Schuster will be their number one wide receiver. He did a lot of great things last year, uh, even with uh, you know the whole you know quarterback situation with the injuries and the poor play. Mm-hmm. James Washington, another young guy who can make plays. Deontay Johnson, they got, and obviously a Chase Claypool, who we talked, talked about, about earlier. Him. And one Actually, of the yeah, they had Ryan Switzer listed as a wide receiver too. Oh, they do, yeah. And one of the more, I guess you get underrated, overlooked moves of the off season in the NFL. I think was Pittsburgh picking up Eric Ebron mm-hmm. because this guy, uh, mm-hmm. he could play. He's a good tight end. He's got great hands for a tight end. He's a red zone threat. Um, and he was in the AFC South with the Colts, so I watched him a lot being a Texans fan. So I really think Pittsburgh should be excited about this um, pickup. So yeah, the, the, especially moves. since Eric Ebron isn't a guy who's very good at blocking, but they do have Zach Gentry and Vance McDonald who are a little better than that. Yeah, and, a solid and that's why line. people don't want Eric Ebron as much. But what we've seen him do out deeper in the field is, yeah. is a lot better than what we see at the line of scrimmage. It mm-hmm. wasn't there last year for some reason, but the first year with the Colts that he had – uh, was spectacular. I think he still has some of that in him. I'm excited to see what he can do with another new team. Yeah, it should be fun to watch Eric Ebron play. And this team has been a team that really hasn't had that tight end position completely filled. I mean, McDonald had f- filled it sometimes, uh, some other guys as well. But they really have you not had to Heath that. Miller. Yeah, you have to go back to Heath Miller. Uh, so they haven't had that good of a tight end yet. I think Eric Ebron's going to be their all-out number one guy. It'll be fun to see how they incorporate the tight end into their offense because when McDonald gets the ball, I mean, they do good with, with involving the tight end in the offense, so I think that's going to look nice with Eric Ebron. And one, one more point on the offense that Ryan pointed out was the offensive mm-hmm. line. Very important. Yeah. And you're watching the Pro Bowl every year, and you basically are seeing like three Steelers helmets on that offensive yeah. line every yeah. year. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, just how it's many usually Marquise, Pouncey, David DeCastro, and Alejandro. Yeah. Pouncey's right. one of the better centers in the league. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so those three tire named off. Then in free agency, they also got Stephen Wisnowski, um uh, at the left guard position, and then Matt Filer is at the right tackle position yeah. as well. Um, uh, so a very very nice offensive line. It should be fun to watch this offense roll this season. Hopefully, they can get uh more into rhythm than they were last year because they have the talent there. Uh, just was not able to get put together because they were playing with different quarterbacks, even though they were doing all right. Uh, now let's move to the other side of the ball, and that is a defense, obviously. Uh, so this is a very, very good defense. They have been making it better and better. It's m- looking more and more like the Steel Curtain defense, and it all starts with last year's move to acquire free safety Minka Fitzpatrick. Mm-hmm. That was a huge move. I think it's something that really could change the whole dynamic of the Steelers' defense and, quite frankly, the whole dynamic of the Steelers' team. Mm-hmm. I think Mika, Fat, Mika, Fat, Mika Fitzpatrick is a phenomenal safety. He has so much. You saw it last year. He, what did he get? Like He got a bunch of picks last year. Yeah, he was all over the field. Up. I'll look it up in a second. He was a ball hawk. Yeah, he was absolutely a ball hawk. So he is a huge threat on that defense. And also some other guys. Uh, who they drafted last year, Devin Bush, oh, at yeah. the linebacker mm-hmm. position. Right. I they think traded he's up had, for him. Yeah. And they traded up for him, and he's doing very, very yeah. good. He gave uh, himself a uh, chance to get rookie defensive rookie of the year Absolutely. Last year, for sure. But yeah. obviously didn't get it because Nick Bosa was just too good. So yeah. it wasn't really his fault. Mm-hmm. And Bud Dufree, also out there at that linebacker position, he's been doing it very nice yeah. for a while. Uh, then you go to the defensive line, and it's extremely well, menacing. You also didn't mention Terrell Edmonds, who they oh, yeah. drafted earlier on as well. Been. Well, you taught, you started. I'm saying in terms of the secondary, because you were going to the line. I wasn't at the secondary yet. I was just but, getting yeah. named off in All right, well, keep going then. Okay. Uh, well, anyways, now to the defensive line, which I said before is very good for this team. Uh, the, the, the left end position is Stephen Tewitt, or Tut. I think it's, I think it's, it's tough, but it's still like two. I don't know. I never really know. But and then at the tackle, Dan Cullers. And then 
uh, two other really great players. At edge, it's Cameron Hayward. And then uh, linebacker, who's basically just a pass rusher at this point, yeah. it's T.J. Watt. And mm-hmm. I love what T.J. Watt can do. I think he's an underdog to win defensive player of the year this year. Uh, I think he's going to have a phenomenal season on this team. He's got some studs around him on that defense. Here's where I was going to talk about it, the secondary. You kind of got into it earlier. Out and out then in this defense. Hey, Terrell man. Edmonds out in this secondary at the safety position. Uh, so I think the Steelers' defense is really a strength of their team. I think that they're very, very good. Well, they, Fantasy- they wise, prided themselves on their defense for a long time yeah. in their organization, mm-hmm. whether it's been elite or not. Like yeah. The Steelers' defense is always something you think of because yeah. – that's what they're known for. Yep. Fantasy football-wise, oh, watch out for their defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but unfortunately, they play the Ravens twice a year, which could be something that you, that might be struggling with picking them. But still, it's a sacrifice. I love talking about fantasy football. So I think this offense needs to get together and really play as a unit, which I think they can. They have some great players, and I think this defense is going to play outstanding this year. All right. Well, I think we talked about the offense and the defense enough, so... Let's do what we always do. Lastly, talk about the special teams. We don't want to leave that out. No. Uh, in terms of kickers, I'm sure you've heard of their kicker, Chris Boswell. He's been there for a while. He's had his ups and his downs. He's sure. one of the yeah. bees. Yeah, one, well, I mean, B. Bell, Brown, and Roethlisberger. <laughs> that aged well, didn't it? There's yeah. only two bees left. Uh, and he, so, yeah, ups and downs <laughs> for him. And then Jordan Berry is their punter. Uh, pretty consistent guy as well. Uh, someone you like to see go on the field and have confidence. Um, and then their long snapper, Cameron Kennedy, according to my thing. I really don't know long snappers that well, so if that's wrong, that's on me. So there's the roster and their draft picks, which are part of the roster now. We like going through their draft to talk about yes, that. Minka Fitzpatrick got five picks last year. That yeah. good. That, at that time, I thought Pittsburgh gave up too much for that trade, but now looking back, I think it was worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I think he just needed to get a chance. Because when he sooner. was at the Dolphins, you didn't really see it. Although, thinking back, yeah. imagine if they had Minka Fitzpatrick to the Dolphins did right now. Yeah, but then what would their draft have looked like this year? What pick, who'd they get with their pick? Was was that when they drafted the lineman, or was that when it was, they... It was either Austin Jackson or Noah Igbenogany, right? I don't remember. It might have been Igbenogany. It was one of those no, two. No, no, no. I, I think, think it was Austin Jackson. Was I think because... Because that was at, like, 20, right? They got Austin Jackson at 18, and 18. then they traded down from 26, which would have been the... Texans pick and they traded from 26 down to 30. Yeah. And got ignited. Mm hmm. So it was Austin Jackson. Good draft knowledge for you there. Uh, but yeah, let's go through now on the table and do a rough record prediction as we've yeah. done for all of our deep dive videos. A rough record prediction. So not too much explanation. And this is not us locking in our records for them. It's just us making, and once again, I'll say it again, a rough prediction. Yeah, well, there's just something about this number that always resonates me when I'm making predictions. It just seems like the sweet spot in terms of it might not be there yet, but I think they're still going to do pretty good. Might have the chance of making the playoffs. While I was making this video, I was actually more hyped about the Steelers than actually before we came into making this video. So just re-going through the roster and all that stuff, it made me realize more things. So I think the Steelers are going to be great, but they do play in kind of a tough division. They're playing against the Ravens twice a year, the Browns twice a year. And the Bengals twice a year. It'll be interesting how the Bengals do. But the Browns, Ryan thinks we'll put up a good fight. I do. And the Ravens, most of the universe thinks that we'll put up a good fight. Ryan. They're not, they're not a horrible team. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to throw that shade at him. But I'm going to say the Steelers will go roughly 9-7 and seven this year. I'm sure half my predictions in these deep dives are 9-7. and seven. But hey, that's how I roll. <laughs> now let's the roll rough to my right over to Ryan for his prediction. Yeah, you look at this Pittsburgh team, uh, there's definitely potential. You know, my just my one big concern, my biggest concern at least, is how long will it take for Big Ben to get back in the swing with some new pieces? You know, they're they're always going to have a shot, and they're always going to be competitive, I feel like, even in the games they lose. You know, I don't, did we even mention Mike Tomlin in this whole video? Nope. Well, we got to shout him out. He is mm-hmm. certainly a good he, coach with when, him and Roxbury. He, had a, like, he really was not in conversation, but he should have been in com- conversation yeah. for Coach of the Year last yeah, year. I mean, because I should have looked to, up the record. Yeah, he was down to like three quarterbacks. Exactly, and, down to three quarterbacks, and they almost made the playoffs. I and mean, it was a slim chance that they could have got in, but they could have still made yeah. the playoffs. Well, yeah, That's he, very much on the coach. And to add on to that, they were at a point where they needed to win multiple games in a row to even have a chance to make the playoffs, and they did yeah. that with not even their starting quarterback, or really their second string quarterback. Yeah. So, very impressive by Mike Tomlin. I'm glad you said that so we could shout him out. Continue with your pick. 
Yeah, I agree with a lot of what Jordan said, but I'm just going to go one game lower. I think Pittsburgh's a solid team, but I think they've got some tough opponents on their schedule. They'll be a fun team to watch, but I have them going 8-8. Eight eight. That's what they finished at last year, by the way, 8-8. Eight eight. Just look it up. They did finish at 8-8 eight eight last year? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, well, I do like the fact that Ben Roethlisberger's coming back. A lot of the pieces are still there, plus they added some. They didn't really lose that much. They have two out of the three Watts on their team now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, with Derek Watt and Derek. TJ Watt. Um, JJ's going to come soon, right? <laughs> yeah. They'll probably trade us for nothing. They right? probably He's definitely will. Texas shirt <laughs> right now. They definitely could do that. But uh, I really do like the direction this team is going, and I think they will improve from last year. And I'm going to go higher than both of you guys did. One higher than Jordan. I'm going with 10 okay. and 6 for them. Mm-hmm. So we're all around the same area. Kind of Jordan yeah. in between me and Ryan. Yeah. So to recap it, Jordan said 9 and 7, Ryan said 8 and 8, and I am saying 10 and 6 yeah. instead of the in between them. Yeah, I feel uh, like. Thank you for that representation. Yeah. You're welcome. I just, yeah. I think some people are visual learners, I've learned, so you might yeah. even see that. That's really nice of you, Jordan. You know, I'm always looking out for them. Yeah. Looking out for you guys. All right. Got you. So that was it. I hope you guys did enjoy that. If you did, uh, let us know by liking this video. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel for <laughs> the notification bell. Uh, also, comment down below what you think about the Steelers, their record prediction, anything you want to say. If you we said something certain wrong players, or something you yeah. disagree with or agree with, let us know anything. We would love to respond to you if you do comment. That's right. If you do, we will respond to you. Yep. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you guys later. See ya.